So we talked already about the possible sensor on a robot, which are the encoders that some motors use to determine their position and which allows them to become servo motors. Uh, the EPUC doesn't have such encoders because it uses stepper motors, but it has a whole bunch of other sensors that are very useful to implement basic reactive behaviors, such as distance sensors uh, around its body. And you can see them here. These are the black little sensors that have four pins and they're modeled after a sharp distance sensor. And the EPUC has eight of them. So you see three here, six total, and then two here in the back. Now you can visualize how these sensors operate by going to view, optional rendering, and show distance sensor rays. This is something you cannot do on a real robot. There you would use an iPhone to see the infrared rays that are being emitted or a special car to visualize um, whether the sensors are on or not. Here in VBOTS you can see it very uh, nicely. And now what we have to do is we have to turn them on in the code. This uh, works as follows. Um, let me open the text editor in the scene tree. We uh, use the get device method as usual to find the sensor. And so we could say something like distance sensor is equals robot get device. And now we plug in the name of the sensor. In order to do that, we check out what the robot actually has. And you see here, it has these PS0 to PS7 uh, solids, which are the actual little distance sensors. And they are named with small letters. So we open the first one by addressing with PS0. And now what we have to do is we have to enable it. And now enabling is new. You didn't have to do that for the actuators. But what this does, it tells robots how often a sensor is available. So if you have a camera which would operate at 30 hertz, then you would need to enable it with a time step of 33 milliseconds, which tells the simulator that every three, 33 milliseconds a new picture is available. In this case, we set the enabling to be the same time as the main simulation step because we can assume that whenever the simulation step runs, one of these infrared readings will be available. So let's see if this works real quick. Let's save this. Let's press backward here to reset the simulation and press play. Uh, it seems to work. The robot turns on the spot. But uh, what you can also do is you can show a console where error message will show and you can also print things like uh, you could write something like um, all sensors are enabled. And let's see if this works. And so there we go, we get our message. Now, in order to all enable all the sensors, we might be using a for loop for E in range of eight. And then we make this an empty array. A list and then append the new device to the S list, enable the last one in the list. And now all we have to do is change the name. So now we should have a list of eight distance sensors. Let's see if this works. Yes. And we can now go and print them also. Let's set the velocity to be 3.14, so half of the maximum speed. So the robot moves forwards. And now we can also read the values and say value equals empty list for i in range, or actually for d or for dist in ds. And now we get every single sensor's value and append it to the value list. 
and now we can print this entire array and let's be a little more clean here and actually call this values because we have more than one in here let's see what happens and i press only once and as i expected i get a lot of values here now there are around 60 which seems to be the um, maximum distance let's see what happens if we approach something like this metal railing here all right so now we should see a change in some of these sensors now we go closer and closer and now we see the values are getting higher and higher now we're having 153 for the zeroth one and 151 for the seventh one so these are these two sensors so they start at zero one two three four five six seven here and uh, that is what we are seeing now let's get a little closer and see what happens as we approach the wall even further and by the way you see here how the sensors show that they actually see something by becoming green as they penetrate the object now as we're getting closer the values are increasing quite dramatically and as we get even further we're getting into the multiple hundreds and as soon as we touch we are even reaching 1500 so what you're seeing is that these values are extremely non-linear and i pulled up um, a drawing of this here so you can see as the distance decreases the value gets higher so how can this be as i said the proximity values are computed by measuring the light that gets reflected if there's no obstacle there the light doesn't get reflected at all so we are seeing a very low value the closer we get we seeing more and more light being returned and because all of this um, decays quite radically we will see this inverse over x square in the curve that we observe so are these uh, real distances no but you can actually use them as proximal values and say for example once the value is above a thousand we know that the robot is very close we will introduce much better distance sensors in the future which are able to actually measure distances this is a very simple and cheap way to measure distances and it is used even in industrial robots like the or ho household robots like the Roomba to measure for example whether the robot uh, reaches a stair or not so there's a little distance sensor like this infrared distance sensor that points down and as soon as um, the light doesn't get reflected anymore the robot knows that it approaches a stair so infrared proximity sensors are not only very nonlinear but also very much dependent on the properties of the reflecting surface uh, for this experiment i've moved the robot a little closer to the arena border and now set the velocity to zero so the robot actually doesn't drive now if i start the simulation i see we are seeing values of around 450. now if you look at the rectangular arena and turn it into base nodes so we can access the individual elements in it we can see the solid wall and this is uh, the number two wall and we can look at its actual appearance so you see that the color of the wall is actually white and this is something we talked earlier about this is a metal wall uh, with very little surface roughness that's why it appears uh, so dark but it still reflects very well if you now go and re change this color to black you will see that the distance becomes perceived to be much further away and this is uh, hopefully clear why um, we are measuring the amount of reflected light if the surface is black it doesn't reflect the even the infrared light uh, well enough and we are seeing uh, much uh, smaller values of reflected light now we can change this by moving even closer so eventually we will even detect this wall 
but the color of the wall is actually very important for infrared proximity sensors to work in robots and in the real world.